would like to be seated. I'd uh, like to invite uh, Professor Paul Greenfield, Vice-Chancellor and President of the University of Queensland to address you. Uh, thank you, Ove. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where we gather and pay my respects to elders past and present. Her Excellency, Dr. Penelope Wensley, AO, Governor of Queensland, and uh, Mr. Stuart McCosker, the Honor Honourable Ro Professor Robert Hill, Board Member of the Global Change Institute and Chairman of the Australian Carbon Trust, uh, Mr. John Storey, Chancellor of the University of Queensland, uh, Adjunct Professor Mary Marnie, AO, Deputy Chancellor, and Dr. Patrick Marnie, Professor Ove Ho Gulberg, an Inaugural Director of the Global Change Institute, Mr. Graham Wood, Executive Director of WhatIf.com Limited, and Ms. Annette, uh, Ms. Annette Olley, Professor Peter Andrews, AO, from the Queensland Chief Scientist, members of the University Senate and Senior Executive, representatives of the Queensland State Government, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. This is a significant occasion in this, our hundredth year of existence and the start of our second 100 years. Uh, we're delighted that the governor could join us for the inaugural centenary oration, which will come a little later. In the first part of the proceedings, we're going to talk about the Global Change Institute. The Global Change Institute is the seventh institute at the University of Queensland. The University of Queensland has seven faculties and seven uh, institutes. And it was born out of the recognition that there are problems uh, in the world that the University of Queensland, in conjunction with others, both uh, other universities, corporate sector, government uh, sectors, both within Australia and outside, can bring to bear expertise on, but what has to be done deliberately in an integrating fashion, in a holistic fashion, if you will. The University of Queensland has great depth in research, and like all great universities, it will continue to have great depth in particular areas of research. But the GCI, as I said, was born out of a recognition that there, there is a role for an integrating institute, for an institute that, as I said, can bring a range of disciplines, a range of uh, experiences to bear. What are the types of problems? Rather than give you a detailed description, let me just highlight one of the complex issues. In 2009, it was the first year that it has been estimated that more than half the global population lived in cities. Never before had that occurred. The, you might argue, is that trend going to continue? Well, if you read a very provocative text called Welcome to the Urban Revolution, How Cities Are Changing the World by a Canadian author called Jeb Brugman, who goes in and analyzes what are the drivers that push people into urban society, even though it appears on, on, in some cases that they are living in, in conditions that we would not regard as acceptable. And of course, what he showed is that the social, the social networking, the economic potential, the emotional potential that can be derived from urban living in many cases outweighs that of the alternatives. And his, of course, thesis is that the pressure to urbanise is very deep and will continue. It's not irrevocable, of course, but that it is unlikely to change. And therefore, issues, to do, issues that that raises, both issues and challenges, are significant. It means that sustainable, sustainability has a lot to do with some very tough questions and much less to do with uh, Emerson's Walden Pond. And that's, an ex that's just one example of the type of problem the Global Change Institute, still in its infancy, uh, will look to tackle. The Institute has just started, as I indicated, under, under Ove Ho Gulberg. It has, it, it has canvassed opinions within the university, 
and we'll be doing so again in the, sh in the, in the, sh in the near future and we'll be going outside. Uh, it, will, it will look at problems in the areas of water, as I said, particularly in cities, problems that relate perhaps to food security, biosecurity, population shifts, and epidemics and pandemics. And as I implied at the beginning, the challenge in those problems is to bring a range of expertise to bear in an integrated fashion, not easy. UQ knows we don't have the answers to all those problems. We don't have the answers within one discipline, within one school, we don't, within one university. Indeed, universities totally don't have the answers. But what they can do is bring evidence-based reasoning to bear on these problems and look to advance them. And so we're looking to the Global Change Institute to begin this process of putting, of, of, of ensuring that University of Queensland is a very significant player into the future uh, in helping tackle some of these issues. It's now my great pleasure to introduce the person who's already been up on the stage, that's Ove Ho Gulberg. Ove and I have been involved for a number of years. We attracted Ove from the University of Sydney to help us bring together our various marine science activities. And so uh, when he came on board, we brought together our three research stations. You might find this hard to believe, but we ran them all totally independently of each other, three marine research stations. For a vice chancellor's point of view, a marine research station, it's a very easy definition. It's a black hole into which you pour money. Um, of course, students and staff uh, find it a lot more attractive. We brought together boating and diving operations, which were scattered. Uh, if, you, if you do a risk analysis of the University of Queensland, four-wheel driving, boating and diving, and 18 to 25-year-olds uh, feature fairly highly. So from that, from that engagement, we developed a whole suite of programs, um, programs that, it, that are now uh, recognized worldwide to the extent that Stanford and the University of California now send cohorts of students every year to actually undertake some of their program for credit at Stanford and the in University of California at our research stations and at the University of Queensland at St. Lucia. And this was the role that Ove had uh, uh, prior to taking up the inaugural director, as, as inaugural director of the, of the GCI. So with that, I'd like to invite Ove Ho Gulberg to give you a very brief snapshot of the GCI as it is today and where it's heading. Ove.